Thank you for staying. Let's get into our first story now. And the National Lottery Authority spent more than 16 million Ghana cities between 2018 and 2020 on corporate social responsibility activities without an approved corporate social responsibility policy in place. Now, this was revealed in the 2022 Auditor General's report on public boards, corporations, and other statutory institutions. The report also indicated that the authority paid some 1.3 million Ghana cities as leave allowance to its staff without deducting the appropriate taxes. There's more in the following news desk report. According to the report, while no corporate social responsibility policy was developed unapproved, the NLA had a significant budget and had spent 16.6 million cities on CSR over a span of three years. The authority spent 2.7 million cities in 2018, 5.1 million cities in 2019, and a whopping 8.8 .8 million cities in 2020. The Auditor General indicated that it had recommended to the authority in 2019 that it urgently develop and implement a CSR policy and ensure that activities it undertook were in line with the policy. However, as of the time of the 2022 report, a CSR policy had still not been developed and approved. Further in the report, the Attorney General also revealed that 10% of the annual salary of employees is paid to each staff as leave allowance without appropriate tax deductions. A total of 1.35 million cities was paid without tax deductions. This resulted in 101,254 Ghana cities and paid taxes and a loss in revenue to the country. Now, the challenge of unemployment and low-grade job prospects among the youth creates major socioeconomic and political concerns. Every year, more than 100,000 young graduates from tertiary institutions join the already choked employment market. Tertiary students awaiting to be employed into various sectors are being entreated to explore business opportunities for self-employment. Clinton Yaboa has more in this report. The youth unemployment rate in Ghana remained nearly unchanged at around 7.14% in 2022. Unemployed youth bearing the brunt of high rates of unemployment raised concerns about the adequacy and suitability of education and training relative to the needs of the economy. In view of this, embracing entrepreneurship as a student has been acknowledged as means of ensuring personal growth and financial independence. Chief Executive Officer of Serendipity Academy, Dr. Elvis Justice Biddy, admonished the youth to consider taking up entrepreneurial activities during their academic journey. You know, the, the youths, we've been depending so much on the government. So I think if it's high time the youths now take, you know, decisions for themselves and, you know, they try to do something for themselves, maybe enter into a business, like do something different in support of what the government, you know, is, is doing. So I think that is, you know, the first step that, you know, would, would, would really curb all these, you know, unemployment in the country. If, if there's someone out there, you know, that's, you know, studying and also want to, you know, do something different, I would advise, you know, the person to really know how to, you know, manage their time. Time management, being disciplined and trust me, everything else is, is, is noise. So the real question is how are we going to be able to multiply that way and that is you learning a skill. It could be, I don't know, in this I do Forex, but I don't know, it could be any skill. Elvis Biddy was speaking at the Learn to Earn 3.0 financial literacy training by the Secretary and Financial Offices of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology Student Representative Council. The training, themed Forex Mental Health and Psychology Awareness, aims to empower individuals with the technological knowledge and skills to manage their finances effectively. Ken West SLC General Secretary Comfort Ewa indicates the training will leave beneficiaries with financial skills to earn a living. When we had the idea of having a program to educate and train students and by giving them financial skills to be able to journey into the financial market of forex trading, we weren't expecting such numbers. 
I must say I'm very amazed. I'm so happy that whatever we have been inspired of to have such a program for the students of KNUSD, they held on to it. They came around with their books and their pens to, you know, jot something down to be able to help them. I mean, not just graduate with uh, a certificate, but then also graduate with skills, skills that would help them earn money and not just join the market of unemployment. Reporting for J News, Clinton, Yeboah. In our next story, the Dufia of Ziofa, Togbi Kodwave, uh, by the fourth, has initiated a campaign to end open defecation in the capital of the Ag Agotime Ziofa district in the Volta region. Now, the project would encompass the construction of sanitary facilities and a public campaign on open defecation seeks to end communicable diseases. The phase of the sanitation project was commissioned over the weekend. Adama of Niger origin lives here in Ziofi with a 10-member family which her husband left behind about a year ago. She has been single-handedly fending for the 10 children and one grandchild. A well constructed in the compound serves as their only source of water as they strive to make a living in the absence of other basic amenities. She blamed her inability to afford water, electricity, and a toilet facility on her impoverished lifestyle. This development is widespread in Ziofi in the Agotime Ziofi district, where the less privileged are unable to construct sanitary facilities in their home. They mostly engage in open defecation in the outskirts of the community, which relies on water from wells and treated plants. The assembly member for ZOP, Philip Kofiga Azameti, said there is always a scare of outbreak of communicable diseases due to the practice of open defecation. <laughs> This threat to public health was a concern for kinsmen in the Ziofi traditional area and was tabled before the Jufia. Togbi Boruave Ahiagba the fourth during his installation. One year on, he redeemed a pledge of constructing sanitary facilities in a bid to end open defecation. One out of five four-unit biogas sanitation facilities earmarked to be constructed in Ziofi, he was commissioned over the weekend. Mary Roots Adovlo is the leader of the project execution team. Anyo, a jachon, a laba jigada, yap, a manho de da do fika, ungodona no yimla, mas malulu, ta a save na land, a moanu, harope van on a sent in on a nika, hygienicalia, menu, ta nipo, ya here, harope, vinya nyabe, a yabunwa, ademia jiawu haro, this is the modern one, ta akademia. At the end of the day, it is the impact that he makes on his people. His focus is the youth. That's the manpower base. And it is not ending here. In his speech, he did mention that projects. He has started the electrification aspect by providing street lights. He will be looking at technology and then what investments can get the youth occupied, can give jobs to the youth. So it's a broad base. Fred Kwame Asari, Joy News, Zyopi. Now, the paramount chief of the Jinim traditional area, Nana Bofo Bene IV, has observed with worry the tall list of unresolved chieftaincy and land disputes in the Bono region. Eight out of the 17 paramount seas in the region are in dispute. Now, speaking in Sunyani at a memorial lecture in honor of the late Nanaya Nyama II, Sunyani Queen Mother, Nana Bafo Bene IV said, until peace reigns in the region, growth and development will continue.
to relieve them. Bono Regional Peace Council's third memorial lecture in honor of the late Nanaya Nyama II, Queen Mother of Sunyani, was on the theme Managing and Resolving Chieftaincy and Land Disputes Through Dialogue and Consensus Building. Participants, including the family and Bono Regional Minister Justina Osubanahini, eulogized the contribution of the late Queen Mother in fostering peace in the region. However, chieftaincy and land disputes remain high, with eight out of the 17 paramounties in dispute. Swal Abdel Akwanda, Executive Secretary of the Bono Regional Peace Council, explains the rationale behind the theme. Sometimes when these cases happen, another way to handle or to manage is to go to court to do adjudication. Or if you want to go to the extreme, or sometimes even to do violence, the parties are to violence in order for it not to happen at all for us to be bringing parties together to facilitate the dialogue so we want to understand the causes we want to understand the effects and we want to understand what can be done to deal with it according to the regional lands officer benjamin jojo edu hansen the dispute affects land administration which needs to be resolved. Those who have even agreed that they should come and determine their boundaries, some employed unprofessional surveyors, those we call the quack surveyors. They are not trained surveyors, but our chiefs rely on them to help them determine their boundaries. No, this brings problems and we have to stop it. Our chiefs themselves, in fact, I will not take them out. They must know that they own their land and we are here to serve them. I will plead with them that right from the onset, they should look for the professionals. Every chief who wants to develop his land into township, the processes are there. Either you go to the assembly or even come to the lands commission. The paramount chief of Junim traditional area, Nanabo Fubini IV, expressed worry about the slow growth of the region due to dispute. He called for peace to end their fair share of development. When the government wants to put up a project, it is a problem. And almost every day you go to court, it is land dispute. It is chieftaincy. So if these things are going on, how do we plan for development? So today as we met here, and Nananum have heard that we are major stakeholders, other stakeholders are here, and they have come out to realize that these two things, land and chieftain this dispute, are not helpful in our city development. We hope we'll go back and plan and take a second look at the ways and means chieftain is facing problems. Precious Semevo, Joy News, Sunyai. Let's talk about the country's finances now. As Member of Parliament for Bolgatanga Central, Isaac Adonko is doubtful about the Finance Minister's assurances regarding a fall in inflation. He highlights several indicators that contribute to the inflationary problem, stating that there continues to be a year-on-year -year growth of currency outside the banking sector. He opines the inflationary rate is likely to continue to rise, seeing that in just a year, money outside the banking sector grew by 44.8%, and in the first half of 2023, it increased by 41.3%, leading to a substantial withdrawal of funds from the banking system. So in December, inflation, mm -hmm. inflation was 41% in May. It increased to 42% in June. That should tell you that inflation is on an upstick. And nobody celebrates 42.5% of inflation. But it was 54.1% at the peak in December 2022. Why? He wanted so he's saying it has declined, and that is a fact. No, I'm saying that if you had 54% uh, mm -hmm. and you think that it should remain there, then you are not a manager of the economy. Let me tell you why inflation will remain elevated. I'm giving you these numbers from his own budget. Year-on-year mm. -year growth. Currency outside the banking sector, the monies that they pumped into the economy, are not in the banks. People are redrawing the money and putting it in their rooms, in their boxes, and under their, their, their beds. That alone grew by 44.8% in 2022, just one year. Half, half year. June of this year, it has increased by, it has grown by 41.3%. It means that in one and a half years, 
over 986% of the money in the banking sector have left the banks. This will put further pressure on inflation. That's why inflation is on an upstick. You have to look at the fundamentals that are driving the numbers. If you were giving me downward growth in these numbers, then I'm seeing that your inflation will be anchored and that you are be beginning to solve the problem. But the problem still persists and it's been getting worse. Look, total liquidity in the economy, 2022, grew by 38%. And by half a year, it has grown even more than the total year, by 44.4%. How can you solve inflation with these type of numbers, liquidity numbers? Look, currency in circulation, 2022, it grew by 42.8%. And as at half a year, it has grown by 38.8%. Reserve money, 2022, increased by 57.5%. And by half a year, it has grown by 29.24%. These are the numbers that are driving inflation. So if you see these numbers and you are not scared, look, if you get 57.5% uh, increase in your reserve money, what it means is that this must be multiplied by a factor of three to get the money supply in the economy. In other words, your amount of money in circulation grew by almost, I mean, uh, your money supply increased by almost 160% in one year. And you need to bring those monies back in order to solve the problem of inflation. Mm. And we cap off the news on that economic uh, note. But do stay with us in a few minutes. We come your way with the news review. We'll be right back.